Hey folks, Wally DM here, and today we're going to take a look at a trap called the Bone Pillar. Now this is a complex trap that was designed by fellow YouTuber and content creator Esper the Bard. In fact, you can find this trap along with several other traps in Esper's Emporium of Esoterica. Now, in addition to traps, the Emporium of Esoterica has over 300 pages of content. It ranges from classes, races, combat, magic shops, bestiaries, named NPCs, general NPCs, and a ton of monsters. And of course, my favorite part of the book, it has 50 traps in there that are well thought out and designed for all levels that you can put right into your game. So the trap that I picked out today is a CR2 challenge rating, but I really feel that you could scale this up or down depending on the level of your party. Now this trap can also be placed wherever you would like. What I would like to do with this trap if I were to run it is the adventurers need to access a secret door and this bone pillar sitting on top of it. That way they have to seek out and destroy this bone pillar in order to access the tunnels that lie beneath. So let's get started. I'm really excited to share this trap with you. Again, this is the bone pillar. Just a reminder that if you're enjoying the content on this channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, join me over on the Discord, and pick up a copy of my book, Wally DM's Journal of Puzzle Encounters, available now on DriveThruRPG. So this is a magical necromancy trap that's going to activate when characters get within 60 feet of it. Now, if they're looking from a distance and want to detect and identify this trap, then no check is going to be needed in order to notice this medium bone pillar and an intelligence arcana or religion DC 15 will identify this as the trap. Now, as far as the description goes, it can be identified as follows. Skulls feature predominantly in this grisly pillar of stacked bones. Now this trap will activate when creatures get within 60 feet of it, and that may very well be the first time they see it. And when they see it, and they're within 60 feet, it's going to activate, and we're going to roll for initiative. Now the bone pillar is going to act on initiative count 20. When the bone pillar's turn comes up in the initiative, we're going to roll a six-sided die, and it's going to have three different possible results. On a roll of one or two, we're going to have skeleton warriors. The pillar summons two skeletons within 60 feet of it. They take their turns immediately after the pillar. Now, each one remains for one minute until it's slain or until the trap is disabled. This result is going to change to the skull toss result if there's already summoned skeletons. So now our skeletons are going to act right after the pillar and they're going to charge into combat. Now let's say that we get back to initiative count 20 and it's going to be our pillar's turn again. So one more time, we're going to roll a six-sided die. This time we're going to roll a four, but even if we were to roll a one or two, since there's skeletons on the battlefield, we're still going to get the three or the four result, which is the skull toss. Now on this die result, this ability is going to attack one random creature within 60 feet of it. If no target is within range, then it's going to ready that attack. Now this is going to be a ranged weapon attack with a plus six to hit. So if this flying skull comes out and hits one of our characters, then they're going to take 1d8 of bludgeoning damage plus an additional 1d8 of necrotic damage as the skull that comes bursting out of this pillar is laced with this necromancy magic. Now it's going to be fairly evident that the characters are going to need to attack the bone pillar or to find a way to disable it. So let's say our minotaur comes over here and attacks the bone pillar. The bone pillar is going to have an armor class of 15 and it's going to have 50 hit points. It's also going to be resistant to piercing damage. Now before we go over the countermeasures in order to deactivate the bone pillar, let's go to the top of the initiative order one more time. This time we're going to roll a five. So one through two is the skeletal warriors, three through four is the skull toss, and then five through six is an ability called terrible cackling. The pillar targets one random creature within 60 feet of it. If no target is within range, it's going to ready this feature. The target must succeed on a DC 13 wisdom saving throw or take 2d6 of psychic damage and be frightened until the end of the pillar's next turn. 
So in this case, we have four adventurers, so I'll roll a four-sided die. And let's say our artificer is the target of the terrible cackling. They'll need to make a DC 13 wisdom saving throw. And if they don't, then they're going to take 2d6 psychic damage and be frightened, trying to get as far away from the bone pillar as they can. Now this is only a CR2 trap, so our Minotaur might be able to finish off the bone pillar by continually smashing it with its morning star. However, if the characters want to try a different approach, perhaps our Minotaur is over here fighting more summoned skeletons, then we can have one of our spellcasters approach the bone pillar and they can try to disable it. One of the ways to do so is if they make two successful DC 15 intelligence arcana checks, then that will disable the trap. Now the requirements for trying to disable the trap with an arcana check is that the character must be a spellcaster, they must be within 5 feet of the trap, and they must be proficient with arcana. Three prerequisites that are going to be needed in order to magically disable this trap. And of course our sorcerers can attempt one disable check per turn. Now our second countermeasure in an attempt to disable this trap is Dispel Magic. This third level spell can count as one successful disable check. So our sorcerers can cast Dispel Magic and then still need to make one successful Arcana check. Or two Dispel Magic spells cast upon the Bone Pillar. Now the third countermeasure that we can use, perhaps our Minotaur Cleric over here, has Turn Undead. If the Bone Pillar is subjected to Turn Undead, it makes a Wisdom saving throw with a plus two bonus. On a failed save, it becomes inactive for one minute or until it takes damage. Now the Bone Pillar Trap is only a CR2 trap and it could probably be handled by most lower level parties. But what I really like about it is the scalability. One of the ways that I think this would scale very well is instead of rolling each time to see if we get the skeletons to animate the skull toss or the terrible cackling, what if all three of them happen on initiative count 20? So we don't do a die roll at all and every time that it's initiative count 20, we have skeletons appear and even if we already have skeletons out there, maybe more skeletons appear. So on the next initiative count 20, we have more skeletons. And then if we make that way again, additional skeletons. And I even threw some skeleton archers in there. I think that would be fun as well. And again, this is every turn on initiative count 20. So not only do we have the skeletons that are attacking, but we also have the terrible cackling and it's targeting at least one of the party members every turn on initiative count 20. And of course we have our skull toss. So after a while, everybody's just gonna get pelted with skulls. And of course, with regards to the pillar, you can require more checks, less checks, or you could give it more hit points or less hit points. Again, this trap lends itself very well to scaling it up or down to fit the level of your party. So that's all I have for you today. What did you think of the bone pillar trap? Is this something that you would use in your game? And if so, what would you do differently? And also, if you'd like to pick up Esper's Emporium of Esoterica in either the book or PDF form, I put links to them as well as this channel in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and on to the next.